Hey everyone, my name is Brunel and welcome to my channel. Um, different video today from the norm and for those who've watched my videos, I look different and probably sound different. But you've read the title, uh, a bit dramatic, but hey, it's what's happened. And I just want to first of all, because for some people this may seem like a TMI, um, but I want to share with you why I decided to do, to do this video and what I really want from it. And I'm, I haven't got a huge following on YouTube. Um, I've only got 20 odd subscribers. But for those 20 odd subscribers, they supported me before this happened. And I've seen your messages before, my videos of positivity and so on. You took your time to post things and to support me and you didn't have to do any of that. And in this fickle business of um, social media, consistency is vital and I haven't been able to post anything since uh, my last video which was the autumn winter uh, lookbook and, and literally the day after I posted that video um, I nearly passed away I nearly died um, and I'm very lucky that I'm here but I wanted to do this video because first of all th this is going to have a long-term effect on me and it's something that I'm going to have to learn to live with and, and something I'm going to have to learn to accommodate. My whole life has changed as to what I can and can't do. And therefore, because of that, it's going to be able to have an effect on what I can post on my, my uh, channel, how often I can post. And also the fact that I look different. I've lost a lot of weight since then in two weeks. Um, nearly, a stone, nearly a stone in weight I've lost. And... Um, and I also look and sound different. So I need to be able to explain that to my subscribers. And um, and also, but apart from that, it's about how suddenly your life can change from one day to another. And I literally, the, the floor can be taken from underneath you. And, and you have to learn things which you thought you knew about yourself suddenly. And you have to learn what's important in life suddenly and appreciate it and and learn to do something about it and and it's about positivity that if you know somebody out there who something so fundamental has changed their lives and has happened so suddenly someone who's had a stroke there is there's a light at the end of the tunnel i'm nowhere near there i'm not even even i'm not even in a tunnel yet at this stage in my life with what's happened so recently but I'm a lot better now in these two weeks since this happened to me than when this happened. You wouldn't believe the difference in me now. First of all, I can speak and you can understand me, which I couldn't before properly. I'm not frothing at the mouth, which is what I was doing at the time two weeks ago. I'm not dribbling, which is what I was doing at the time. I'm able to sit up, which is what I couldn't do at the time. And I'm learning to do different things. I'm now learning to walk, which is a shocking thing to be able to say in two weeks. I lost that. Um, I'm learning to use my arm. I lost that. And this is not scripted. Um, I sort of decided I, wasn't, I was going to do this video, but I hadn't decided what I was going to say. This is just me, raw as it is. Tell it as it is. And... I'll try not to wrap it up and, you know, make it all pretty and all that. But I don't want it to be so it's such a sad, sad, proper, really sad video because it's not all about that at all. It's about something fundamental that's happened in my life and I'm sharing it because it's going to have an effect on me and what I can do on my channel. Um, and I'm sharing part of me and that's what being on YouTube is or having any social media. It's sharing part of yourself. And this I can't hide at all. You'll be able to see the difference. Um, so just to backtrack a bit, just a brief history of what's happened um, or how it happened. On the 7th of December, on a Wednesday, I was out as usual, running around with the kids, doing this and that. And I went to my kickboxing black, uh, class as usual. Um, and that was, I did... The kid helped out with the kids' class, which is about five o'clock, um, and everything felt fine. Then it hit six, or just gone six o'clock, and it was the adults' turn. So I was doing my class, um, and right from the bat, we started doing some warming exercises, 
nothing no punches no kicks nothing like that just simple exercises about speed um you know like when you've got boxes bag and you're doing that motion and you're increasing your speed and we were doing things like that just to warm up and, and see our speed and i noticed straight off for okay something feels really strange i was kind of slow and i'm not the fastest but i can be very fast and so i noticed i was going quite slow and then i noticed also that um I was getting tired. My motion was slowing down like that. And when I was supposed to be able to do, you know, both things. And you'll notice it as we go through the video, I'll show you what the differences are in my in now, what I can and can't do physically. But I noticed that. And then class where class went on and I noticed even more that I was getting very, very slow. I was feeling off balance. Um, not sick, you know, when I vomit or anything like that, but just completely like the ground I got the measurements of where the ground is kind of wrong. Um but I did my class, super girl me, ha ha ha, um, did a whole class of kickboxing. Um, and, but I knew I, things weren't right. I was very slow. My speed wasn't there. My strength wasn't there. I need a, and my instructor asked me to come and do it like a display in front of the class. And because I'm fairly advanced in my belt, that's not unusual in itself. But I had to say no, so I couldn't do it because... I knew I wasn't quite, I wasn't there up to my normal level. And I remember my partner at the time asking me, do you want to take a break? And I'm like, no, 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 we just push for it, push for it. That's the usual me, just push for it, carry on. I'll have a quick moan, but I'll still push for it. Um, and I did my class, finished my class. Things were progressively getting worse for me. I left my class, I went, walked outside. My car was parked directly opposite. And I had a bottle of water in my hand. And I remember the bottle of water falling, just suddenly falling out of my hand. And I thought, okay, right, okay. I bent down to pick up the bottle. And as I got up, I felt really, really off balance at that point. The bag that I was carrying with me, which I had a strap there, which is just like gloves and stuff like that, which normal with mine, suddenly felt very heavy. And I felt I, it was just flapping, hitting my, my legs because the things were just feeling, feeling really unsteady. So I thought, right, OK, I called my daughter. I thought, I've got to get to the car. Got to get to the car now. Managed to cross the road, lucky. Got to the car and literally just fell into the car at that point. Things got really serious at that point. I couldn't feel my left hand side. But I didn't know it was my left hand side. My left hand side. I just couldn't. Feel, I felt completely off. I couldn't feel my side. I fell into the car. I dropped the phone on the way. And as I called my daughter and said, let, let, I started slurring really bad. I could feel literally saliva falling out of my mouth. And I thought, OK, this is really serious. And the word stroke just was very clear cut in my mind, stroke at that point. I'd sort of had an inkling, which is really strange. I can't explain it, but it's like when someone whispers something really low and then eventually the whisper gets louder and louder and louder and eventually just bang, hits you there. So you're surprised, but you're not shocked, really. So um, I knew it was a stroke at that point. And when it comes to a stroke, time matters. You have to be get help very quickly for that person. And I knew that, so I'd get to the ambulance, call the ambulance, but I couldn't find my phone and I couldn't move my left hand side. I couldn't lift myself, I couldn't turn myself. I couldn't get to the phone, I started panicking. I was the scariest moment of all. Um, but then I realised also I can't panic because I've got my daughter in the car and I need to be able to be clear. Once you panic, things get a bit jumbled up. So I had to calm myself, I calm myself, I calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. And she managed to find the phone. And I remember the clearest words I could say at that point then was just ambulance. And even then it wasn't quite clear, but they understood. After that, when they started asking my name, where I was, anything like that, I couldn't. I was just dribbling. I was just, that was it. And that was scaring me. And my daughter had to then explain to them where we were, get the address. And, and also explain that mummy's having a stroke. You need to hurry up. Please hurry up. Mummy's saying, please hurry up. She's having a stroke. Uh, anyway, the doctor came on the bike. And I remember trying to be awake and trying to not scare, not scare my daughter. So I, wanted, I didn't want to leave her on her own. But, you know, she's my little girl. And 
So when he came over, I tried to kind of like bring a sense of humor into it. And he said, I'm just going to check your, your blood pressure. And I said to him, oh, it's going to be high. So he went and checked and he went, oh, my God, or oh, my word, something like that. But he reacted. I said to him, see, ha, <laughs> told you it was going to be high. Uh-huh. So he put some kind of emergency code in there, told them basically, I, I can't remember word for word what it was, but he told them it was one of those emergency codes and that I'd lost, uh, it was confirmed, um, stroke I lost the use of my left hand side and the ambulance arrived a few minutes later got me into there they said they're going to try experimental drugs I said go ahead um and they tried it and then they took me and I remember trying to think it's like you've got to keep your brain working you've got to keep your brain working you've got to you've got to keep functioning your daughter's in the car in the, in the ambulance with you you've got to keep functioning and and I noticed that it was taking the journey, it was taking too long. So I said, to, I asked them and they said, oh, we're going to take you to a specialist hospital. We're not going to take you to a local hospital at all. We're going to take you to a specialist. I was very lucky. They took me to Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel, which deals with strokes um, uh, quite a lot. So they're used to that. And I remember going in, uh, arriving and speaking to one of the matrons or one of the matrons explain, um, uh, introducing herself and bless her, thank you very much. She kept my daughter, she kept, com- you know, my daughter company, spoke to her, tried to keep her down, calm her down. And I must have lost consciousness at that point, went, because I remember waking up after they were pulling, wheeling me out of uh, the machine, uh, the, uh, the the room and I've just had a scan and then one of the doctors then called out my, they called out my name and it sounded from afar. So then it got closer and, and I answered and, and he said, do you know who you are? And I said, yes. Part of most of them well, yeah, of course, huh, what? Uh, and then he said, well, okay, what's your date of birth? And I gave him that, but I think so, it was very slow. And I could hear myself talking and very, very slurred and very, you know, part of my mouth, my side felt dead, and and he said, "Okay, we're going to take care of you." And, and he said, "You've had a bleed, a brain on the brain." I thought, "Okay." So I remember saying, "Oh, it's serious then?" Um, and he sort of laughed, but yeah, but I don't want you to worry too too much. But so that's what happened. I had a stroke, and a stroke is is. For those who don't know, is a lack of blood so going to the brain, and usually do a probably three mini strokes, which is sort of happens but short term, and then you've got uh, I hope I don't butcher the word ischemic one, which is more sent one, which is like a um, like a, a like a blockage of some kind of the the supply of the blood to the brain. And then you've got a homologic one, uh, I think that, that's or sounds similar to that, which sounds very much like a hemorrhage because it is, which is basically a burst of the blood vessel um, in your brain, and that's the one I had. So it burst, and my and my my it started bleeding in there, and I'm very lucky, extremely. This is two weeks. This happened on the 7th of, um, of December. I'm very lucky because, first of all, I'm alive. And some people not make it. I'm also lucky because brain damage can happen. And I'm sort of okay. I can't say one, 100% that my brain's exactly how it was because I can't. Because what's happened to me, the effects of it, and what's going to happen in the future... I don't know, no one knows. But I'm also lucky because I'm still here. And I can talk now. And you can understand me, hopefully. And for a lot of people, they don't have that. Not that quickly. And I had loads of things going for me my age, because it's unusual to have a, a stroke at a young age. But it's not even not unheard of. But I, to a, a quite, I'm quite a healthy person. I was into exercises, healthy eating, no smoking, on any of that. And I'm not trying to preach at you and saying, oh, yeah, you got to be the cleaner than whatever. But it makes a difference as you, the potential of your recovery. So I'm lucky. I had to lay in bed 
next to people who couldn't eat uh, food anymore. So it's nil by mouth. And they had to be fed by a tube. I had to listen to people who were literally choking in so much pain for hours on end with doctors trying to work on them because they had fluid in their lungs. And because when you have a stroke, it's not just the kind of you can lose your life or the brain damage or or the loss of being able to use part, certain parts of yourself. Um, I couldn't walk. I'm learning to walk now. Two weeks later. I'm learning to walk. I'm learning to lose to use my arm. Because I can't really do much. I couldn't do this two weeks ago. I couldn't lift this. I can lift it now. I couldn't bring it, move it back and touch my nose. Do that. You see my fingers as they are. This is this is the best that I can do at the moment. And that is a miracle because I couldn't do any of this two weeks ago. And I'm learning. I've got exercises that I've got to do to help me grip things. And I've got exercises to help me speak properly. So I'm not dribbling at the math and frothing the math. And so that you guys can't understand me. I've got exercises that I've got to do in order to be able to walk properly so I don't trip over my own, my own feet. And it's practice, 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 practice. But I've got to relearn all these things in two weeks. Imagine you're going by your life every day and then suddenly the following day, you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't feel one side of yourself. But that's what's happened. And I'm very lucky that I can, I can explain these things. I am grateful. I'm not angry, actually. I can't go into the anger part because I'm learning how vital your happy inner self is when it comes to you recovering, when you've had something major happen to you. If you're an angry person, if you're a person who spends all your time with negativity, it will eat you from the inside out. And you would have lost the battle before you even started. So it's not just about you physically being fit, it's about mentally pushing yourself. Having kind of, I don't know, finding a happy place within yourself and who you are and I'm about to learn that and I'm very grateful because I am so lucky to have so many good people around me, my family, my friends, acquaintances, the people at my kickboxing class. I can't even explain what they've done for me. I can't and not everybody has that. And I'm very lucky. And the words of encouragement, I still get texts every morning. How are you? Hope you're, you're okay. They take it day by day. And they don't have to do any of those things. And they do. And that, that helps me so much. So I want the positivity to come out of this video. You look around you. Christmas is a few days away. And learn to appreciate all what you have and the people around you and show them that you love them and you care about them because you may not have that the following day. You may go through life and then suddenly it's all gone. And that's what you need to have. And I'm lucky to be here today, but this is going to affect me. I have to learn to walk and you guys are going to be here. This took me two hours to do this makeup look. <laughs> because it's so hard to do makeup, eyeliner, oh my God, I can't even do that properly at the moment. So I'm struggling, so I'm learning to do all these things. Anyway, I hope that you find this video useful and that uh, you share it amongst others. And I hope to speak to you soon. Um, and um, you take positivity from it. And if you want to see how I'm getting on, uh, because every day there's something new that, I'm, that I improve on, then please, let me know, share in the comments. But this is a positive one. This is something that's happened to me that can happen to anybody and you can't spend your life in anger and you can't be really saddened about it. So I hope I post something more positive next week. 
So I'll see you soon. But have a good one. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. And enjoy your life. And I'll speak to you soon.